Telcom Business, behind South African businesses' drive to thrive. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Entrepreneurial SME, even if I have to say so myself. I'm your host, Rem Smabote. Today we're joined by a somatologist and beauty veteran, Sandy Fair. After being in the industry for four decades, Sandy moved from Cape Town to Johannesburg to expand the footprint of her company, Beauty Therapy Institute. My name is Sandy Fur. I am originally from Cape Town and only moved up to Johannesburg about five years ago permanently. I have been in the beauty industry since I left school, believe it or not. I think I'm probably one of the oldies in the industry right now. I'm fully, fully committed and connected to the beauty industry on all levels, from the professional side to the education side of the beauty industry. So the business is, it's called Beauty Therapy Institute. It's a group of training colleges in the beauty and hairdressing sector. So we teach students facials, waxing, manicures and pedicures, makeup, massage treatments, whole cross section. So we're taking the students from newbies to already qualified therapists and upskilling them to be able to enter or stay in the beauty industry at a higher level. Most of our colleges, our Beauty Therapy Institute colleges, and we have 20 of them now, they are, all of them are offering the flexible learning courses. Giving out a certificate at a graduation ceremony is one of the best feelings in the whole world. Because I'm acknowledging somebody's work that they've done and somebody's potential to have a laugh. One of our daily challenges is finances, financial challenges for our students. The, the interest is there, they don't have the money. So we've introduced things like payment plans for the students, we've introduced uh, loans for the students, that type, student loans, that type of thing. But that I think is one of our biggest, biggest challenges is, is for our students to be able to get the finances. Sandy, hello. I hate getting personal, but could you improve this beauty? <laughs> Everybody's resurrectable. <laughs> <laughs> for my benefit, what is a somatologist? Oh, isn't that a big word? Huge, it sounds so a bit kinky. <laughs> okay, um, a few, probably about 15 years ago, the, or maybe even 20 years ago, I'm, I'm dating myself here, but we went from becoming a beauty therapist to a health and skincare therapist and eventually a somatologist. But the word somatologist was originally brought to the table by the University of Technologies. So the graduates from the University of Technologies, they came out immediately with the title somatologist. The word soma being the Latin word for body. Oh. So a bodyologist, if that makes I any see. sense. But according to my language, we're beauty therapists. That's 40 years do. into the business. Is this a reflection of the longevity of Sandy or the <laughs> fact that the beauty and hair industry will never die, or yeah. is it both? So I think what happened is back 40 years ago, this was not an industry that was even factored and has become, so I was there from fledgling through to where we are today, where we're in the, one of the largest growing industries in the world. So I think um, looking forward, looking to the future, I think there is definitely something to be said about this industry. To the naked eye, this is a, a female business, right? Yes. This, most of the clients are, most of the the owners are on the other side, the therapists are. Right. Is it created that way? Is it, does it favor women deliberately? Yeah. I think, what happened, I think what happened in those days is that it was predominantly females only because you weren't getting paid very much. It was like the glorified housewife went to go and study beauty and they did makeup and they did nails. So it was just this little feminine industry that you went to go and play with, that your husband let you go and do because you didn't have to stay home all day. But it's now become 
I think with the introduction of women becoming driven as business women in their own rights, it's become one of, of the most important industries, I think, into the future. And what has happened through the years is just in my own team of about 58 in my group of, of educators and administrators, we've got five males on our team. So hopefully that will grow as well and we, and we become more integrated as equal men and women because if women can be in the beauty industry, why can't men, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about you. Yes. How have you grown as an entrepreneur over these years? 40 years is a lot. I mean, right, you started in the 80s. Yes. Describe your own growth. So originally I qualified as a beauty therapist and went out to work in various beauty salons and another word for it, beauty clinic. Mm. And um, eventually I got to, to a stage where I thought, well, I really know my subject now and I'd love to be able to teach others what it is that I've experienced and what I've learned over the years. Not just book knowledge, yep. but knowledge of experience having worked on so many clients over the years. And I got into education just before I was 30 and absolutely loved it. And eventually at the age of 33 opened my first college, which is, I picked a name out of the sky, Beauty Therapy Institute. And now 26 years later, it's become a very, very well known group of beauty therapy colleges, which are franchised. And we are teaching students on a daily basis, enrolling on a daily basis, students in 20 colleges, which it, is amazing. Going with the theme of this show, do you also teach them to be entrepreneurs? Yes. You know, it's, it's one thing that they can do the skill, they can, mm. do, they can make me look better and walk away feeling better about my nails and stuff like that, but could they walk away and become the next you in the yes. next 40 years? So the interesting thing that people don't know about the studies of beauty therapy is we study anatomy and physiology, which is first year level varsity, we study chemistry, physics, cosmetic science, and we study business studies and client relations management. So it means that our students are learning the plus and minus of business. They're learning about marketing and sales. They're learning about communication and etiquette. They're learning across the field so that when they finish with us, they've got the tools to be able to say, I know that I need to brand my business. I need a business card. I need yeah. all these different things that will set me off in a, on a journey to become self-employable. So what has happened over the years is so many salons have opened and independent mobile therapists, mobile nail technicians, they're out there on the road on their own having registered their businesses, become self-employed, sole proprietors, registering their businesses as PTY Limited doesn't matter. Yep. For us, for us, it's about giving somebody a future, giving somebody a career, giving, giving somebody a livelihood. Has any of your past students become a franchisee? Um, yes, my first, my first, I had a student who studied with me for two years. She then worked for me for 10 years and then became a franchise partner. She moved up to Johannesburg, so I started my college, first college in Cape Town. She moved up to Johannesburg, she started my first school. So that was my, uh, she's, uh, now she's one of my best friends, but she's a, a role model for me because I look at her and I go, well, this is exactly the kind of journey that somebody could go through. And now you're in 20 countries in the continent. We'll talk about that, I need to yeah. take a break. It's just too fascinating for me. <laughs> we'll come back shortly. Thank you.